What's up guys? Today I want to do something a little bit different. During my time in Puebla, I definitely ate over a hundred different dishes. So I thought it'd be fun to try to figure out what my top 10 were and rank them. I wanted to kind of live react now to how I remember them. So with that, let's kick off with number 10. All right, so at number 10, we've got the seafood tower from Atracadero. This was actually in Cholula. All right, let's get that sauce poured on there. Um, this honestly wasn't like the most unique dish or anything, but just look at it, super bomb, um, super refreshing on a hot afternoon. And what I really liked about this is a lot of the seafood tostadas I've had or things like this dish, they're usually fish or shrimp or octopus. This one had all three. You see that massive chunk of tuna right there. The sauce I'm pouring on was super yummy, very citrusy and limey, really nice. And then on top, you can see those kind of crispy fried onions. Um, to the side in the bottom left corner, you can see those sauce bottles. They were super good too. There was like a like habanero one, a habanero cilantro one, and a tamarind one. And then looking at that seafood tower, we can see avocado, cucumber, red onion, Super bomb, let's go to number nine. All right, number nine. I know what you're thinking, you're in Mexico, how's the top 10 thing you ate, a croissant? This croissant was so, so good. This was the best bakery we had in Puebla. Honestly rivals the big bakeries in Mexico City. It was so light, warm, flaky, airy. Like, look at all those layers. Um, we got it right after the place opened, so it was nice and warm. It was just so good, and I didn't have anything for like another month after, and so we're in Querétaro that like kind of rivaled it. So this was one of the most memorable, um, best items I had in Puebla, Super Bowl. All right, number eight, something much more appropriate after the croissant. Um, this is the Taco Arabe from Tacos Cambry. And first thing you can see is that trumpa or that meat spit. This meat just looks so different than all the other ones I had. And this, oh, this piece of meat you can see, super crunchy and tender. Um, and I ate this one, this was probably the third Taco Arabe I had. And the other ones were okay, but until I had this one, I like really didn't understand the hype and why people ate this but this one was incredible. The meat was bomb. The sauce was excellent. Um, I think I might be talking about the pita and how good that is. Um, but you can just see how good this one looks. If you're interested in tacos arabes or tacos like this, uh, shameless plug, I'll throw the, the card up here so you can watch. I went to four different spots and ate a bunch of different ones and compared. This one was easily the best and I'm having super FOMO for not going back here more often. All right, number seven, and we're immediately getting some orange chicken vibes here. It's actually battered, uh, fried shrimp, super good. Dipping that in a sriracha, aioli, and then I don't know if you saw it before, there's like a yuzu glaze, so like this kind of citrusy syrup. It was so good. Again, like kind of just remind me of home, super just comfort food, perfect texture. Here's another look at it, bomb. So at number six, these are the tetelas from Agurio. These were actually the second thing period that I ate in Puebla. The first thing were chalupas from Agurio also. Um, and I had no idea what I was getting into. I just kind of asked what they recommended. So tetelas, and I could be totally wrong, but it's this, it's this like 3D looking chip thing. I think it's made out of beans. That alone is super good, but there's so much other stuff on this going on that makes it so good. There's these herbs, there's that radish. This meat was one of the best like meats I had. It was super savory, super salty, but just really good. And there's just so much going on these like bean chip things that they're just so unique and so yummy. Um, I only ate these one other time during my time in Puebla and I have no clue why I didn't seek them out more. Uh, the other time they were really good too, just not as good as these. Uh, so I really, really enjoyed these. We are now about halfway through the top 10. Um, what do you all think so far? Uh, of what you've seen so far, what, is, what looks the best? Is there anything you expected to see that you didn't? Um, is anyone thrown off by the croissant? Um, yeah, let's keep going, let's roll to number five.
All right, I am super pumped for number five. Um, these are rabbit pibil chilequiles. So chilequiles to me are breakfast nachos. You've got chips covered in your choice of sauce with cheese and crema. Um, and these are extra special because of the protein is rabbit pibil. So maybe you've heard of cochinita pibil, which is famous in like the Yucatan region, which is like a style of marinated, slow roasted pork. So they use that style, but with local rabbit here. And then what's also cool about these is they had two choices of sauce, green or red, but you could also get both. So I got both and their red sauce is actually using habanero, which is a little atypical. And then on top of that, the chip texture was really good. Some were really crunchy, some were a little soggy. So I like that varied texture. And then the temperature um, was perfect. And then the heat you got from the habanero, but really the fact that they had that unique local rabbit pibil, these were awesome. All right, number four, probably not another thing you'd expect. This time it's shrimp pizza. I'm not the biggest fan or have never had shrimp on a pizza. Um, so we actually split this 50-50. I chose the side with like the Serrano ham. My partner chose the side with the shrimp. And I've got to say, I was completely wrong. The shrimp itself on this pizza was bomb. Everything about this pizza was super good. And that habanero sauce I poured on here is like peanut based so that you got that nutty peanuttiness that matched really well with the shrimp but then also habanero match. So the flavors on this were just perfect. And then um, I actually enjoyed this kind of like cracker crust, this thin crust. And I actually had a slice the next day, room temp, and this was just super duper bomb. If you've made it this far, buckle up. It's time for the top three. So here we have the molote from Maisal. So typically a molote is like a street food. Um, and here we're eating it at a fine dining restaurant, so they've really elevated it. And the first thing you might notice is this molote is dark charcoal black, whereas a molote is typically, you know, that beige or tan, just dough color. And here we've got this awesome hot sauce that has like dried crispy worms and larva in there. It was actually really good. Um, and then we also have this kind of yogurty white cream sauce that has this green herbal drizzle oil there as well. And then if you can see kind of this black dust, it's also in my cocktail there in the bottom right. That is actually burnt corn husk that they use as a seasoning on their food and their, and their cocktails. And then that green oil just had these, it was so herbaceous, it was so good eating herbs, but like in a liquid, it was so unique. And then that yogurt was refreshing. This was such an awesome bite. Next one is gonna be no surprise to you if you've watched my last few videos. It's the Milanesa Samitas from Samitas Lupita. And yeah, quick plug, if you're into this and you wanna see more stuff like this, I will link you above to the traditional Puebloan food that includes three different Samitas. But here I ordered uh, a chicken cutlet one and a pork cutlet, and here's kind of that cross section beautifully. Look at all that beautiful Oaxacan cheese or casillo, those massive chunks of avocado, those red chilies mixed with egg, and then that cutlet of meat, and you can see that poking out in the back. And then here's just another great shot before I take a bite. Um, man, all that cheese you can see, that bread that is also actually called a semita with those sesame seeds. This was just one of the best things I had. I ate half of it and then I waited and then it got you know cold or whatever and I was not hungry at all and it was still so tasty. That cheese had so much flavor, so much texture from the bread and the cutlet. I'll try to edit the sound in here and hopefully you can hear it over my voice. All this cheese. But this was just absolutely just one of the best bites, period. Killed my stomach. Crunch that bread super, and all this cheese. Super <laughs> worth. It's so good. <laughs> moment you've all been waiting for. Number one, my top bite in Puebla, and it was none other than the tartar at intro. Quick plug, if you wanna see the whole meal at intro, including that you know orange chicken looking shrimp, I'll put that card above. It was my best meal in Mexico so far. 
and this was the best dish. So I'm mixing up the tartare here. That egg that broke was a quail egg. That yellow sauce you see there is their homemade Dijon. And then these awesome toast points that I'm putting the, the tartare on. The tartare was so finely minced. Um, I typically like those big chunks, but this just gave such great texture. The, the bread was super you know, dry and crispy, and there was just so much flavor, such incredible texture. And then they also had like a white truffle oil in here that just came through so nicely. And then I think what I'm about to grab here, I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's part of a flower. I don't know if it's an insect, but it's something that was super crunchy. And this gave a ton of texture. And this really, this combined with the, the Dijon and the truffle oil made this dish super memorable and unique. And yeah, that's why this was my number one dish in Pueblo. Thanks for spending your time walking through my favorite bites in Puebla. Hit me in the comments with your favorite looking bite or dish. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Till next time.